at home chair massage. You can ask the person just to sit up neutrally. Try and round your shoulders back. Do you want a pillow behind you? Sure. Does that feel supportive or yeah. do you want it lower? Uh, a little bit lower. How's that? That's good. Okay. So yeah, so make sure you guys are using a chair that's comfortable. You can use like an office chair with a softer back. And don't work too hard to have good posture, just don't slouch either. So you can just introduce your touch by just doing some gentle pressures. You can stand up on your tippy toes if you want to apply your body weight a little better. That's why an office chair might be good because you can actually lower it. So I'm just grounding the heel of my palms down into the upper traps here knee muscle and I'm just playing with the whole collarbone or shoulder girdle just giving it a jiggle and then we'll start with um, fascial work so fascia is a thin connective tissue that envelops the muscle tissues and tight fascia or restricted fascia can actually cause pain and restriction of, of movement as well. So I'm going to start by stretching that out, just pinning one hand on the neck and cross pulling with the other hand. So like a crisscross motion like this. Does that hurt? No, it's good. Okay. It can hurt. So just make sure you check in with your buddy that you're massaging and make sure it doesn't sting too much. So I can pull my hands apart in lots of different ways and directions, but I kind of want to go vertically for the most part. You can do a lower section, you can do it right on top of the shoulder on the upper trapezius. So just that cross spreading motion with your fingertips. And if at any point as as the stand-in massage therapist, your hands are getting tired, just give them a break, shake them out. You can do this forearm stretch right here before you keep going, give your knuckles a pull. It's only short, so you're most likely not going to hurt yourself doing this, but you can always take a break. So another thing you can do is a technique I use often called skin rolling. So I'm actually crawling along his skin grabbing and moving my hands all the way along. Is that okay, Brandon? Yeah. You can do that. You can do it in like a pulling motion. And you can also do just single-handed, just dragging your fingertips along the skin. So as you can see, the skin is reddening or rouging and that is supposed to happen. That is the presence of blood in the surface of the skin. So this is why fascial techniques are a warm-up technique. When you're working on any area of the body, you can start with fascial techniques. So I would repeat the same thing on the other side. So once I've done my fascial work, I'm going to coat my hands in lotion at home probably best to use an oil that the person is not allergic to because it'll continue to have glide on the skin whereas most moisturizers will just be absorbed by the skin and you'll have to use a ton and it gets kind of sticky so i'm just going to start again by putting pressure i'm going to go from the top to the bottom standing on my tippy toes so i can use my weight and i'm just using the heels of my palms again push into the upper traps in like a triangular motion. So once you get sick of doing that or <laughs> you feel like you're warmed up, then you can use your knuckles. So you can make a knuckle fist like this and start by pushing your knuckles into the back slash sides of the neck. So on either side of their spine and just pull down with your knuckles to the very edge of the shoulder just like you were before with the heel of your hand but this time it's a bit more specific might be a bit more intense for them so make sure you check in make sure they're feeling good 
And then at this point, you might start to notice um, areas on either side that feel clumpier or tighter, or you can ask the person if one side feels like it needs more attention. So I am going to hone in on the left side and use both my hands because this way I can reinforce with the top hand and get a bit more pressure going on and a bit more focus or specificity. So you can change it up between your knuckles and your fingertips, but every time I go to make a stroke with my fingertips, I'm gonna reinforce with the other hand just to add some weight and protect my left hand from being overworked. So I'm feeling little nodules and a trigger point in there that might be more sensitive for Brandon. Can you feel that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you just let me know if it's too sore and too much pressure, okay? Will do. Perfect, so I'm just gonna go from the top to the bottom three or four times over the problem spot, just making sure that he's okay and is breathing. So it's a good reminder just to tell the person to breathe normally. And what I'm doing, I'll show you with my hands without it covered, is I'm just going all the way along the upper trapezius with my fingertips. Like that, all the way to the end. You'll feel a bony ridge right here. And you can go along that bony ridge on the top of it. Okay, so another technique you can do is some squeezing. So you can use both hands to actually grab the upper trapezius because it's quite like meaty on most people and you can actually grab it between your fingers and your thumb usually so you can give it a squeeze with both hands and gently travel down and if you want to make it shorter more pliable and easier to grab you can actually ask your massagee to tilt to that side gently um, and that way it will be easier to grab, it'll be in less of a stretch position. So make sure they're at least at neutral or a little bit to the side that you're squeezing. How's the squeezing feeling? Feels good. Okay. So yeah, you can do this for however long, however many times you can handle. And if you want to work a little bit, I'm gonna scoot you to your knees to the right. The chair. If you wanna work a little bit in the back as well, you are going to go find the spine and you're gonna go away from the spine, like diagonally downward. So you can do that, you can do some fingertips like that, you can do knuckles like that, and I'm just holding Brandon's shoulder so I can have some leverage, so I'm just kind of stabilizing and going fist in, like you're giving somebody props, going towards his shoulder blade. So I'm going from the spine to the shoulder blade in just kind of a circular knuckle motion. How's that feel? Feels good. Good. Okay, so once we have this area warmed up, traps warmed up, and we'll go back to the left. So now I can start working a bit more specifically on the side of the neck, so getting into the scalene muscles. So this might be a bit more sensitive because they are like smaller muscles and they're getting closer to the spine. So just make sure again, the person's, person's okay with their pressure and that they feel comfortable letting you know if it's too much. So I am just doing a fingertip grasp like that and just kind of pulling. So what I'm doing is I'm planting my fingertips, supporting the head with my other hand, and then I'm kind of doing a slight pull towards myself and down. So I'm just hooking my fingertips and pulling back and down for scalenes. So you can reach all the way forward until you hit the collarbone and finish your move there. Or you can just come straight down onto the upper trapezius again where we were working before. Okay, so you can do that to both sides. Make sure the neck side of the neck gets some attention. And now I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite moves. It's a traction, so a seated traction. What I mean by traction is an opening of the spinal joints, a lengthening of the neck basically, like traction aka pulling. So in order to do that, I'm gonna pull the head up. Gravity's gonna pull the rest of his body down, obviously. So I am just going to make a shape like this and make a nice like 
sort of cradle for his head. So I'm gonna squat down. The heel of my hand is gonna find the bony part of the skull right there that we all have. And just kind of gently clasp around the ears and gently pull up. So if you have too much lotion going on, you won't be able to do this. So you can grab a towel or a cloth and just get the residue off your hands and the neck. And I am going to just ever so gently pull up. What I'm really doing is squeezing my hands together to make that upward motion happen. And even if it's subtle for Brandon, he should feel like a lengthening sensation through there. Do you? I do. Okay, so once I get my cradle around here, you can let your head go for the most part. And I'm just kind of slowly standing up like I'm squatting up, but I'm really just squeezing the base of his head. It's really hard to, there you go, take your own head back. It's really hard to obviously see. <laughs> see like the difference and the lengthening that's happening, but it's an inward and upward force. So you can do that as many times as you want, just making sure that you're really gentle and really careful and really gradual. Um, and then you can repeat all those techniques on the other side. And then in the next video, I'll show you some self stretches that you can do for this area of the body as well. So once you're done your traction, I would recommend flushing everything out, and what I mean by that is big, broad, sweeping motions covering all the areas of the skin and muscle that you worked on. You can use a little bit of knuckle as long as it's lighter, and you're just recirculating blood in all these areas just to prevent soreness later, although I think that's a very low risk considering it is a short chair massage. And just encourage the person to get up slowly and drink lots of water for the rest of the day. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs>